Okay, everybody, we're going to try this again because my dog is incredibly annoying, so I had to go put these stupid earmuffs on that are for the shooting range because he's playing with toys and driving me nuts and distracting me. So, I want to make this video while I have some time because it's like 3 in the morning and I can't sleep, I have a little bit of energy, and um, I thought this was a, a good video to do, so I'm going to do it while we will take plays with his toys and make all the noise. So, if you hear noise in the background, it's my psychopathic dog who is an unstoppable, just noise-making machine right now. Um, okay, so with that said, welcome to Vinny, uh, welcome to Vinny University. Uh, this is Maletti Law, he's Shogun Sam Law. So this video comes to you not from a legal perspective, just from kind of like um, when you were in school, like a social studies, right? Like a social studies, like civil studies. So I'm going to explain to you in this video um, how governance works in America, how our system works. I'll try to do it briefly with multiple different colors. Um, you know, the three, four, or maybe five areas of government that we could highlight and discuss on federal and state level. Um, and the reason why I want to make this video is because with the recent election of Donald Trump, if I have to hear one more person come into my office and complain to me about, I don't know, the chaos that's going to happen in this world, let me just explain to you how governance works, how governments work in this country, and why, just like Bush didn't send you to war, just like Obama didn't take your guns, nothing's going to happen here. But I, I think if I give everyone a general study, um, an idea on how governance works in this country, how the system works, I think it will help ease tensions, and I think it will help people understand how it works. Okay, so let's get down to it. So, government has three branches, okay? So we have the executive branch, we have, I'm gonna do different colors, we have the legislative branch, And then we have the judicial branch. Now we have, there are two more ones kind of like implicit in our system of governance. And the other one is, um, was like a creation over time. It, the other one could fall really under the executive branch, but it kind of has like a life of its own, but let's let's go into it a little bit. So let's start with executive, okay? So you have the executive branch. So these are the generally these are the three branches of government. Each branch. So here's a here's a here's a kicker, right? The Constitution doesn't say that the Supreme Court is the supreme law of the land. That was a creation of the Supreme Court. Theoretically, each one of these branches is the supreme law of the land because that's the whole idea of checks and balances. So obviously the leader of the executive branch on the Fed that you have, with all of this you have a federal and state level. Okay, that's how it works. So you have the federal level and the state level, right? So let's say Fed, F for Fed, S for state. So for the federal level, who is your executive? It's the president. Yeah. Then under him you have the vice president. Yeah. And so forth. For the state, you have the governor. Governor, if that's even correct. Governor for the state. Then you have, um, if it's like for the city, you have the mayor. You know, things like that, right? Because it's city, state level and everything. Now let's see, you have the executive, then you have the legislative branch, right? You have, the, you have, you have like the legislature, same thing, federal and state. Right? So for the federal government, you have the Senate. Yeah, buddy. For the state, you have the House. Yeah, buddy. So um, then we have, let's go into the judicial branch. You have judicial branch. You have here, you have the Supreme Court, right? Supreme Court. This is the, oh, sorry, federal and state. You have Supreme Court. You have the circuit courts, and then you have the district courts. 
I just know obviously the most about this because I'm a lawyer, right? So, um, or at least I pretend to be on TV. And then you have the state. State, you have whatever the Supreme Court of the state is in New York, let's say. You have the Court of Appeals. Then you have the appellate term. Let me write it like I actually can. Appellate, division, or term. And then you have, you know, whatever, the Supreme Court, which are the entry courts in New York. Okay. So, now, we keep going. So, um... Oh, sorry. You also have, like... You also have, like... So, that's, like, the house here, let's say. Hold on, I'm sorry, I have this wrong. Because you have a state legislature. So, I want to kind of, like... So I kind of just want to highlight this because you have a state legislature. I don't know what it's called because I don't particularly care. But you have like a state legislature and a state side too as well, right? So you have, you know, the Senate and the House, but then you have like the state legislature that does all the legislative districts and everything, the electoral districts. Like it's a really big complicated branch with a lot of bases. But the big overarching rule I want to point out here is that you have three specific levels of government, right? So... You know, the executive branch, they have, you know, I don't know, they, this, you, you'll see this thing, it's, um, you know, they have the ex executive orders, that's like a special short-term power that the executive has, you know, obviously the judicial branch, you know, Supreme Court, you know, they call themselves Supreme Law of the Land, and you know, the House, they have like their two-thirds, like the House and Senate, they have like their two-thirds, their majority rules. So, so let's let's talk about this for a moment, right? So, here's everybody's concern. Everybody's concern is like, well, what if the president does something crazy, right? Well, what what if Trump says 75% of you are all going to be fired tomorrow? Um, the only way that would possibly ever, if po it would never happen, but... The only way that would ever possibly occur is, let's say, he issued some kind of executive order, which would be subject to judicial review, which then could be overturned by a majority Senate, a uh, majority Senate and House vote. So he can't act, you know, like he can't act indefinitely. You know, he can't act and he can't act like supreme. It doesn't work like this. Supreme Court, you know, may render a ruling which may curb it. So he may have some executive order. Uh, lawsuits may happen here in district court. And then the lawsuits will go to circuit and then Supreme and then they'll comment on it. Um, you know, there could be, you know, other ways. They may, this, the legislature branch may turn back around and propose some kind of like, you know, propose some kind of like majority rule and like some, some kind of super majority rule that would then cause pressure on the president. You know, the states may start looking into it. The states may start challenging and start issuing orders of their own, executive orders of their own or, or passing legislative rules of their own. You know, state supreme courts are on. You know, a state supreme courts basically on the you know kind of like on the same levels like the supreme court. I mean, the supreme court is the supreme law of the land, right? But that's self decreed, okay? Like if they really want to challenge, like no one's gonna tell them shit, <laughs> you know. So I mean, like you have options. So in America, we do a system known as bicameralism. Bicameralism, maybe. It's called bicameralism. It's like basically, you know, two branches of government pass the law subject to review of the Supreme Court. So, I mean, you can't, it's very difficult to just like, just act unilaterally with nonstop power. It's very difficult. As a matter of fact, the only time in existence I've seen this was Cuomo in New York. I've never seen, and, and Galvin Newsom in California. This dog is making such a mess. That bed, he just ripped off that thing like crazy. I'll show you later. So yeah, Galvin Newsom in California, he just he just rules whatever the hell he wants. Um, the only one I've seen that before was Cuomo. Cuomo ruled whatever he wanted with no response to anybody. So um, you know, so I, I you know those that's the only other time I saw like kind of like a dictatorship in my life. I'm 42, so that's the only time I ever saw like a unilateral rule was Galvin Newsom and Cuomo during COVID. I've never seen it anywhere else. Um, but generally speaking. You know, no one of these departments can really act on their own. You know, no one of these departments can really do whatever they want to do. You know, it, it just doesn't work like this. It, 
There's a tremendous amount of checks and balances. There's some other items too that are interesting, um, and it should be, you know, historically it was always supposed to be, but it isn't. You know, they say they say that the fourth branch of government, that the fourth branch is actually a news media, is the news media. Technically, that's supposed to be the fourth branch of government: news, north, east, west, south, right? The news media. So that's typically that's this is generally supposed to be the fourth branch of government that really watches these people. And when they do things naughty, the fourth branch of government is supposed to report, and the people are supposed to like respond with their votes or respond with. I don't know, they respond to tyranny with revolution, right? So, um, so I mean, they don't do their job no more. They're just basically a talking point at this point for the two major parties, you know, Republican and Democrats. They don't really have any independent, like, they don't really matter anymore. <laughs> I think, you know, it's really funny. I'll get a lot of heat for this. I even think, I like, I think things like Fox are, like, even, like, they're all, like, they're all pro like big government, all of them, including Fox too. Um, I don't really see, it's funny because if you ask me, I don't see much of a difference between the two parties. It just, I just see two different ways to go at it, right? So like I just, you know, the perfect example is this in my opinion was always the debates with John McCain and Barack Obama. And they were talking about, you know, providing socialized medicine. And Barack is like, well, you know, I think everybody, I think, you know, the government's going to have socialized health care. Everybody's going to have health care. It's going to be, everybody's going to get free health care. Obviously, it's not free. The taxpayer pays for it, right? So, I don't know. We'll take more money on taxes from people to pay for health care for the country, right? John McCain came around and said, well, you know, no, 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 no. We're going to give everybody a tax rebate to buy your own health insurance. And that's how you're going to get health insurance. So, but that 5000 per person for a tax rebate for the health insurance is going to be from tax dollars. So either we're taking, we're taxing everybody to give you $5,000 back, or we're taxing everybody to give you free health care, which probably might come out to $5,000 a year per individual. I don't know. But the point is, to me, from my perspective, it was just coming to the same result at different angles, right? So to me, there's no difference in the parties whatsoever. It's just how they do it. But um, that's how I look at it. But yeah, but the point is the fourth, the fourth, air, the, like, the fourth body of um, governance in this country is supposed to be the news media and they're supposed to be the watchdogs. They don't do it no more, whatever. Now, another way you could look at it, because it's pretty interesting actually. So even though it comes from the executive branch, it has a life of its own. Um, you have like this, you have like the, like administrative law, right? Administrative law. And I mean, and like this gets like really aggressive administrative law. So this is your EPA from the federal level, right? Let's say federal. This is your EPA, uh, your FDA, right? Um, your FBI, your FCC, Right? This gets like, you know, these things have kind of like a mind of their own, right? Like, so the EPA does whatever they want to do. The FDA the same way. I mean, during COVID, the FDA was, the FDA was just a tyrannical organization during COVID. Like, they were nonstop tyrants. Like, they were, they were like suing, uh, what the heck was it? They were suing like Dr. Mercola for vitamin C because he was saying vitamin C was healthy for your immune system. And naturally, they, they, you know, they pursued him for, you know, Interfering with you know the COVID vaccine, which was obviously a bunch of bullshit, but um, but so but agencies are very aggressive and they kind of do whatever the hell they want to do too as well. From the state level, you know, you have uh, notable mentions mentioned such as the California Air Resource Board or CARB because anything having to do with CARBs is bad for you, whether you're a bodybuilder or a legislature. Um, another notable entry is the New York uh, the Department of Labor in New York. The NYDOL is extremely aggressive. Um, the New York State Human Rights Division, right? They're very aggressive. Um, trying to think of some other really big aggressive in, in the, uh, agencies. You know, New York has their own version of the um, EPA. They got the NY, 
DEC, I think it's the Department of Environmental um, Conservation or something. You have that, uh, Department of Transportation, obviously. So you have some pretty aggressive, like, some pretty aggressive agencies that get national notoriety. Um, you know, here you have the NLRB. This is another one that's very aggressive. Oh, another big one, right? The EEOC. This is another big agency. So, you know, a lot of these agencies basically act just unilaterally. They do whatever they want to do, and they just move on. They don't typically... You know, even though they fall under the executive branch, they kind of govern on their own. So let's just say, uh, you know, an example. Let's just say Trump says, "I'm I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna issue uh, I'm not gonna require any more federal regulation of uh, cafe standards, which are you know uh, pollution standards for vehicles. I'm gonna turn off cafe standards." Or we're not moving them forward anymore, whatever the case is. We're not enforcing it, whatever, right? Um, there's no reason why the EPA can't push forward on their own and say, we're going to take what's in existing, in effect now, and what we're currently working on, we're just going to continue moving it on. Like, there's no reason why they can't. He would essentially have to, like, like disband the EPA, which isn't going to happen. Um, he can't do that. It, it would require, like, you know, congressional approval, um, if they uh, and then and then they would probably and then even if he did have congressional approval, they'd probably go to the court and fight it in the courtroom. So you know they couldn't do anything. But the point is, is like it's not so easy, right? There's so many different layers. There's a system of checks and balances between executive, legislative, and judicial. Um, you know, and then you always have you know the administrative bodies, which kind of like weed in and out of there. Um, an example in the state is the DCAS, which kind of operates really quietly. Like, no one really knows what they do. <laughs> you know, they, they do the Department of City Administrative Services, but they have a real estate arm, and they have other crazy things that they do that don't even realize, right? I mean, I just learned a few things now recently, what they do. They're actually really popular. Um, and then again, you know, like I said, then you have the news media, which is kind of like failing miserably. But now you, now, hell, now you have the rise of... Whew, alternative media right so now you have the podcast is reporting the joe rogan's in the world you have you know i don't know what's this other guy that's really popular now um there's andrew tate's in the world he's really popular on things you know so you kind of have like x is really popular right so you kind of have you have the traditional news media and now you have like this alternative news media but people get their people get their news from X nowadays, which is formerly Twitter, right? And then you know, and as you know, as I think about it too, right? And then, I mean, then obviously you have then well, I don't know. Let's see another another checks and balance. You have that's this is this would be five. Then you have another one. You have the public, right? I mean, hell, people get frustrated. They up, they rise, they get crazy, they march, they protest, they do things, you know, when people feel atrocities, you know, you have Black Lives Matter, for whatever that was worth, I, I wasn't, I didn't really care for it, but it existed, it's there, it's a power, it's a check, it's a balance, right? So, you know, you have that, and by the way, and uh, and what you also have, which, which I just, I hate that it's like, so, I hate that there's like this unholy alliance now, but the free market. This is always supposed to be a check to government. No matter what happens here, this is always supposed to be a check. There is always, always, always supposed to be the free market alternative to the federal government. There's always supposed to be this competition between this, this country governance, like this Washington, D.C. governance, and companies running and advocating and promoting societal benefits and, you know, proposing, pro you know, creating jobs and serving as the check for an unbridled government. But we don't have this no more because now we have them in fucking bed with each other. Like, like, like Flex that he just destroyed this toy on the bed, you know? So, so hell, what's this? This gets a seven now, right? So, Realistically, okay, originally when the country was founded, and, well, whatever, it's Thanksgiving, I'll refrain from the politics on it, when we drafted the Constitution, okay, and we created this system, we had a system of checks and balances, we were thinking three 
majority systems. You were thinking an executive, a legislative, and a judicial branch, right? Each one of these was supposed to be powerful on their own and they could act on their own and do what they want to do on their own. That was each one of these had that ability to do so. But with checks from the other. And there was a constant tension between them where they were always disputing. And above all, the hand that was on top of all of it that was reporting all the nonsense was the news media. You know? And that's how it was originally. Now came the rise of, you know, the administrative agencies. You know, free market took a step back to the government. You know, I mean, the public used to be more active. Now they're not. You had a public square where people were, you know arguing and protesting and complaining you know now you have alternative media coming up so at the end of the day there are lots of checks and balances it's not really as easy as you think it is um people think that you know trump is just going to come in and just deport all the eagles it doesn't it just doesn't work like that it just doesn't it doesn't irrespective of any what your politics is no one is just deporting all eagles. Like, just, just the thought of that is crazy, right? Or no one is cutting 75% of the government off the bat like this. Um, that's, just, that's just insanity. So, um, and I could just tell you now that the, if they ever even so much as attempted, you could almost imagine, and, you know, my law firm included, you could, also, you could almost imagine the just hundreds of thousands of lawsuits that would be filed within the first day for all kinds of issues. Um, not to mention the protest, not to mention the political backlash, not to mention all the news media freaking out because everybody's losing jobs, not to mention all kinds of craziness happening, you know, in the turmoil. So, um, you know, I just, I just want to say it, it's, it's a lot of stuff is easier said than done. Um, a lot of stuff will not come to fruition. You know, we'll save it for another video, like a part two of like why, you know, maybe I'll have a short of like why I think it is what it is. Um, why these things are always said, um, you know, I mean, just to lead into it a little bit. I, I take the position that anything having to do with central governance, like at the White House, is a celebrity position. I mean, it always has been just a celebrity position. Well, at least in more recent times, it's been a celebrity position. Um, so, I mean, that's realistically where we are and yeah so i hope this was helpful i hope this gave you some kind of comfort in um at least just taking a step back to think it's not as easy as you think it is and um it's a little bit more challenging our society is a little bit more complex there are checks and balances um while they may be skewed right now and why they may be changing differently because as technology changes and as the culture and people's temper and attitude changes, um, how politics is done changes. And yeah, so if you have any questions, concerns, certainly send them my way. And uh, if you want to sue, if you get fired by the government, you want to sue them, call me. I'm an employment attorney. I'd love to sue the government. That makes me very happy. Um, we have employees that do your immigration stuff too. So if you need your papers, you need something done, we'll help you there as well. And uh, have a good day. And one more for road. Look what he did to that. Look what he did. Look what you did, buddy. Are you going to fix that doll? You're not going to fix that doll. He destroyed, he destroys the bed and he destroyed that poor doll. Have a good day.